What's up everyone? So today I'm just going to look at applying some custom character logic to the third person character. I don't know, I'm just going to show a little bit of the basics. There's a lot to this and a lot of it is the same, just kind of building upon different systems. So I'm going to show you how we can go about creating custom rotation for the character. The characters that come with Unreal Engine have this character movement component on them. And if I scroll down here, you can see that they have use controller desired rotation and orient rotation to movement. Uh, these are the options that you have by default. Uh, here's the orient rotation to movement. As you can see here, if I rotate the character very quickly, it's kind of catching itself as it rotates around. And that's because the rotation speed is quite slow. However, if I go in here and I speed this up, let's say to something like 1200, you're going to see as the character rotates, it's really, really fast. Like there's no ease out, there's no interpolation, it's just, it's very quick and I don't quite like the way that that looks for games. It's a little better with a controller, but it's not great. So what I'm going to show you is how I go about making that feel a little better in my games and also some ways that I go about making sure that I can still control the rotation of the character otherwise. So down here, I'm going to create an event tick on my graph and on the character movement component, you can see that I've unchecked orient rotation to movement. I'm going to grab the capsule component here and I want to go set world rotation. And this is how we're going to set the rotation of our character. I'm going to drop in a sequence here as well. And so basically the idea here is we want to be able to set this rotation based on a target rotation that we can set as a variable. So in the variables here, I'm going to go target capsule rotation. And then I also want to create a current capsule rotation. Just notice that uh, we got our target there. <laughs> and so what we want to do is we want to calculate what our target capsule rotation is going to be. And then we want to use the target capsule rotation to interpolate the current capsule rotation. And then the current capsule rotation is going to ultimately be the rotation that we assign to our capsule. You may think right now that the functionality that you give this is going to be exactly what you need for your game, but chances are as you go through and you develop other characters, you might feel like you need different logic, especially between player characters and AI characters. So one thing I like to do is create a function and I'll call this calculate target capsule rotation. And this needs to output a rotation and I'm just going to call this return value. Up here I'm going to check the peer box just to make sure that we don't need to give this an execution. And then on the event graph I'm going to drag this function out and plug this into the target capsule rotation. Back in the function here we just want to decide exactly how we want our character to rotate. And if we're going to build something similar to the way that orient rotation to movement works, we want the character to be facing the direction that the player is inputting into their controller. So to do that, we can actually utilize the character movement and get the velocity. And this is going to return the velocity of the character's current input. So if we get this, we want to check to see whether or not it does not equal zero. And if this does not equal zero, that means the character is inputting a value. I'm going to give this an error tolerance of 0.1. And what that means is it has to be at least 0.1 in any direction before it's determined equal. So off of here, I'm going to drag and I'm going to go select rotator. And we can plug this in here. If the player is inputting movement, we want them to face the movement direction. So we can drag off of here and go rotation from X vector. And then I just want to expand this here. You can do that by right clicking and you can either recombine or split. I'm just going to split this one as well and then plug the yaw into the yaw. And this is just going to make sure that we are only giving it a yaw rotation. And if the character is not inputting anything, we actually just want them to be equal to whatever the current capsules rotation is, because if the character is not inputting something and they're currently slowing down, we just want them to continue to face the way that they're currently facing. Okay, so now we know what our target capsule rotation is going to be. Now we want to use this to determine the current capsule rotation. So if I drag off of this, I can go R interp2. And this is going to interpolate one rotator to another. 
And for that, we're just going to use the world delta seconds. And for the interp speed, I'm just going to set this to something like six for now. For the current, we can give it the current. And for the target, we want to use the target rotation variable. Because if we want anything to change within the function, we can just do that here. And as well, there are going to be times where we don't want to use this at all. So let's say we've got an AI character and we want the AI character to be facing the control rotation for other reasons that do make using an AI much easier. One thing that we can do is we can create a Boolean variable and I'm gonna call this use movement rotation lock. And then we can just drag that out here. And then once again here, we can go select rotator. And if we've set that we're using Oh, sorry, this should actually be use auto movement rotation lock. We're going to make this instance editable, and I'm just going to drop this in a category called settings, just for example. And so this would be a setting that you set on your character before gameplay. And so basically, if we are setting up that we want to use our auto movement rotation, which I will set to true here by default, then it's going to calculate our target capsule rotation, which I'm actually going to change here to be calculate target movement rotation, just to make that a little more explicit here. And so if we're going to calculate the target movement rotation, this is either going to give us the movement direction or the current rotation, depending on whether or not we're moving. However, if we don't want our rotation to be based on our movement, we can set this here. And then what we actually want to do is just set the target capsule rotation to the target capsule rotation. And that's going to allow us to manually set the target capsule rotation variable. And this system will continue to work as intended. However, instead of automatically rotating to the movement direction, it'll rotate to whatever we set later as the target capsule rotation. So for things like entering combat and having a character change to face its target, or for cutscenes where you want the character to be walking in one direction but maybe facing another for effect, you can do stuff like that as well. And as I just implied, there are times where you're also going to want to change this effect during gameplay. If a character gets hit in combat, you might want them to turn to face their target. However, if you're calculating the target movement rotation, you're never actually going to be, be able to get the target capsule rotation to change because it's just constantly going to be setting itself to the current capsule rotation, which will always be the last input rotation before the target capsule rotation was calculated. So what we want to do is for our calculate target movement rotation here, we don't want to do that with just a single boolean like the use auto movement rotation lock. So we actually want a way for multiple systems to be able to lock this and then only become unlocked once every system is finished with this mechanic. So what we can do is I'm going to actually create another boolean and call it allow movement rotation. But I'm going to make this an array. And sorry, I'm actually going to call this allow movement rotation lock. And what we can do is we can create a function called allow movement rotation. And this is going to take a boolean and it's going to be called state. It's also going to return a boolean. It's just going to be a return value. And what this is going to do is we're going to take the allow movement rotation lock and we just want to check what state is input here. So if the state being input is true, that means we, we want to allow the movement rotation, which means we want to remove a positive value from our lock. So if we go here and we go remove item, oh, not index. If you just type remove, it'll hover over item first. As soon as you type I, it'll automatically change to index. Anyway, we're going to throw in our remove here and change that to a positive. So we're removing a positive boolean from our array. If this is the last system to remove a positive boolean from the array, that means there are no more in the array, which means the lock will be invalidated. Once that's done, we can return with the false here. We actually want to add a positive boolean to this array which means we're now adding a positive boolean to the lock. From this one, we're gonna return a false. However, from the top one here, when we remove, we actually just wanna drag off of here 
and see if this contains any true values. We can change that to a not boolean. And if this does not contain any true values, then the movement rotation is allowed. And I'm sure this still might be a little confusing, but uh, when you set it up for yourself, hopefully it makes sense. Hey, so just gonna cut into the video here a little bit because gotta make a bit of a correction. Uh, basically, this remove node here actually removes all instances of the boolean from the array. But basically what you want to do is you want to figure out how many entries you've had in this array here. And then we're just going to minus that by two after we've removed one, which is going to tell us whether or not we've got any entries, the first one being zero remaining in that array. So if we are not greater than negative one, we can assume that the array is empty. And if we are, we can just do a for loop, adding those positive entries back to the array that weren't supposed to be removed. And finally, what we can do here is we can create one more function. And I'm going to call this movement rotation allowed. And this is going to return a Boolean return value. What we want to do is we want to grab our lock here, go back over here, and you can see where we've got this contains. I'm going to copy that and paste it over here. So we're checking to see whether or not this array contains a positive Boolean. If the array does not contain a positive Boolean, that means that movement rotation is allowed. I'm going to make sure that this is a pure function as well. And then in our allow movement rotation, we can actually just pull in this function right here. And we want to return whether movement rotation is allowed. And then finally out here, we can grab movement rotation allowed, drag a select rotator off of here. If movement rotation is allowed, the character is going to use the calculate target movement rotation. And if it's not, one more time, we're going to set it to that target capsule rotation so we can set it manually as well. And that is pretty much it. You can see here that I've set the value to six. And if I rotate the character slowly, you can see it kind of actually looks similar to how it does by default. However, at the same speed, if I start to rotate the character very quickly, it actually takes much more effort to make the character catch itself in its rotation and spin around the opposite direction. However, it does happen, and in that case, the character will actually try its best to continue spinning that direction. Sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes it does. However, this system also works great with faster interpolation speeds. Similar to how I set the other one to 1200, I'm going to set this one to 12. And it's basically impossible for this character to catch itself now. But if you move the character just side to side, you can see that it still looks much smoother. Okay, and so just to show you the lock-in effect, just to see whether or not that's working, what I'm going to do here is in the Blueprints folder, I'm going to create an actor, and I'm going to call this BP Movement Lock. And then in here, I'm going to add a box collider. And I'm just going to call this, eh, I'm going to just be called box. On the event graph, we just want to delete all of these. Right click on here. And I'm going to add a begin overlap and end overlap event. We can just grab the other actor and cast that to a third person character. And if that is successful, we want to allow movement rotation. And we're going to set that to false. Once the character ends overlap, we just want to check this again to see if it's a third person character. And if it is, we are going to allow movement rotation. Finally, I'm going to drag this guy into the scene here, give it a little bit of depth. And just so we know where it is, I'm going to go to the box here. And it is currently visible, but I want to make sure it's not hidden in game. And if I hit play, you can see that once I am inside this box, the character no longer rotates to face the way that I'm moving. And this will basically allow you to run other logic in a different system that forces the character to face the way that it's required. Finally, you can see if I leave the box, the character is then going to start rotating the required way. So if I go like this, it's just going to spin once it leaves the box. And that's pretty much all there is to setting up custom logic on your character and making sure that it's expandable to work with other things that you set up in the future. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please consider hitting that like button. It really does help. 
as well. If you'd like to see other videos like this in the future, consider subscribing. I hope you have a great day.